In this recording, we are going to discuss minerals. Okay, so first of all, we have calcium. This is probably one of the most well-known minerals. It is required for bone growth, tooth growth, um, maintenance of our bones. It's also required for nerve function, even muscle contraction. So we talk about calcium a lot in anatomy and physiology because we use it in so many places. Um, most people know that you can find calcium in your dairy products, but you can also find them in lagoons and even your dark green veggies. So there's those dark green leafy veggies coming back to get us again. Now you can have deficiencies of calcium, which could lead to osteoporosis, um, could lead to muscle spasms, nerve dysfunction. And then if we have too much calcium, we could end up with uh, kidney stones, could lead to heart arrhythmias, and it could actually cause muscle weakness. Okay. Now we also have chloride. Now, chloride is probably not quite as well known as calcium. This mineral plays a role in osmosis. Uh, it's also required for stomach acid production and helps us with our acid base balance. We get our chloride from really one place. Uh, and that is table salt, okay, so sodium chloride. And then deficiencies can cause muscle cramps. Excess chloride can actually cause fluid retention, okay, so you have a little too much fluid floating around in your body. Then we move on to magnesium, okay, so magnesium, we have another co-factor, um, okay, in our, uh, with our enzymes. Magnesium helps us with bone formation, okay? And it is an extracellular cation, okay? Um, now, our dietary sources here, green veggies again, uh, whole grains, as well as dairy products. Deficiencies can lead to muscle cramps, and then excess could cause diarrhea, um, could cause heart arrhythmias. Um, neither of those are super pleasant, obviously. Now, phosphorus. Um, this one is a main component of our nucleotides, so our DNA and our RNA specifically. This is also required for um, bone and tooth production and is a component of one of the buffer systems in our bodies. Dietary sources include meats, grains, dairy, and legumes. Deficiencies could cause osteoporosis, um, fatigue, muscle weaknesses. And here's another rare one, really no known problems um, with excess phosphorus in our bodies, okay? Now, potassium, okay? Potassium, uh, we've probably heard potassium quite a few times as we have moved through the body systems and um, plays a role in osmosis, but it's probably most well known um, as part of the electrophysiological processes, also known as nerve conduction um, or muscle contraction when we do those action potentials that we talked so much about. Dietary sources include sea salt, um, specifically sea salt, not table salt. Um, a lot of fruits contain potassium, as does dairy and some veggies. Deficiencies, we see heart arrhythmias, again, could include heart failure and muscle weakness, okay? And then excess could also cause heart arrhythmias, and if it gets too bad, um, it could be death. So again, here we see another example of deficiencies cause heart arrhythmias, excess causes heart arrhythmias. So how do we know if it's a deficiency or if it's an excess? Um, medical testing. Yeah, lab, labs. We got to get some labs on you and see what your levels are. Um, again, try not to get too terribly bogged down in um, just memorizing every little um, dietary source, a real deficiency, um, or excess, things like that. Now, 
sodium. Okay, besides calcium, sodium is probably the other most well-known mineral. Plays a role in osmosis, but you probably know it better for the physiological, or excuse me, the electrophysiological processes. Again, the nerve conduction, the muscle contraction, all of that occurs via those action potentials. So if you remember how action potentials work, we have sodium coming into our cells and potassium going out of our cells during the action potentials. So more often than not, um, if you're talking about those types of processes, if you're talking about sodium, you'll also be talking about potassium and vice versa. Now, um, again, our dietary source, table salt. Remember we said table salt with sodium chloride. We already talked about the chlorine, the chloride part. So don't forget the sodium part as well. Deficiencies. Oh, look, more heart arrhythmias and muscle weakness. Again, if you can't do action potentials properly, your heart's not going to work properly. Your muscles aren't going to work properly. Excess, again, more heart arrhythmias. Also, water retention, um, and that water retention can lead to high blood pressure. Okay, so that is a little bit different than the potassium to help keep those separate. Um, sulfur. Okay. This is, this one you probably haven't heard of quite as much. It is a component of some amino acids, not all amino acids, but um, there are a few that have sulfur in them. Um, where are we going to get this from our diet? Pretty much anywhere you can get protein from um, dietary sources. So uh, your meats, um, things like that, certain dairy products contain a lot of protein. Um, now, if you don't have enough sulfur, you aren't going to be able to produce enough of those amino acids we mentioned, uh, which means you're not going to be able to produce the proteins that are made up of those amino acids. So you would have certain protein deficiencies. And here we do have another example of not really having a scenario where you can have too much sulfur in your body. Now, those were our major minerals. And so by major, we mean uh, we need quite a bit in our diets. The rest of these minerals we're going to talk about are referred to as trace minerals. So we still need them in our bodies, but we don't need nearly as much um, of these last few minerals. All right, so first trace mineral would be fluorine. This is required to prevent tooth decay. So um, you probably have heard of fluoride, which is similar, um, but a lot of toothpastes are fluoridated, and even some mouthwashes are fluoridated um, to help prevent the tooth decay. Um, dietary sources. I had to include this one. Um, sea animals. Sea animals contain fluorine. Um, I don't, know, I don't even know what to say about sea animals. Um, but then it's also added to most of our drinking water. And then I did mention the toothpaste. Um, that's fluoride technically, but it is uh, very similar. Now deficiencies uh, are going to, you're going to have a lot of cavities. Okay, your teeth aren't going to be very good. Now, uh, excess, uh, normally we can't, we're not really going to see a scenario where you'll have too much fluorine in your body. Um, you can kind of have too much fluoride from the toothpaste and the mouthwash, which if you read your packaging, um, you're not supposed to swallow toothpaste because of it. Okay, um, but the fluorine derivative specifically, not really known that you can have too much of that. Oops. Let's try and get here. Oh, there we go. All right, iron. Okay. Uh-oh, did I skip one? I did. Iodine. Come back, iodine. Okay, iodine um, is required for the production of thyroid hormone. And we spent a good deal talking about thyroid hormone where we did talk about the endocrine system. Hopefully you remember that your thyroid hormone is basically your major metabolic hormone. Okay. Um, so that one's kind of important. Now your dietary sources, again, with the sea animals, um, but uh, dairy which that's not how you spell dairy. And then it's uh, added to some salts. Now you can also buy non-iodinized salt. 
Okay. So if you have had your thyroid removed, um, you cannot process the iodine properly and you don't need to eat iodinized salt. Okay. So if you go to the grocery store, next time you go to the grocery store, um, look uh, in the spices aisle and there are like, I swear every time you go to the grocery store, there's a different kind of salt. There, there's so many different salts out there, but some of the salts specifically say on the packaging, non-iodinized salts. And um, those are um, okay to eat by people that have had their uh, thyroid gland removed. Now deficiency, you could have um, hypothyroidism if you don't have enough iodine. Um, and so hypothyroidism, um, your um, metabolism would take a hit. Okay. Now excess, don't really know of um, scenarios where you would have too much iodine in your body. All right, iron, go back to iron. Um, required for synthesis of hemoglobin. Okay, now hopefully you remember that hemoglobin was the little protein on the red blood cells. This is where oxygen binds, okay? So if we want to transport our oxygen molecules, which we really do want to do that, we do need proper um, fully functioning hemoglobin molecules, which requires iron. Where are we gonna get that iron from? It's going to be places like meats, eggs, legumes, uh, some grains and some veggies but um, main sources are usually the meats, the eggs, the legumes. Now, if we don't have enough iron, you will probably suffer from iron deficiency anemia. So um, most people are pretty familiar with the iron deficiency anemia. Um, usually leads to like fatigue, things like that. And then excess iron. So if we have too much, it can cause nausea, vomiting, and ultimately it could cause liver damage. So again, we always do want to find um, that sweet spot of any of our vitamins and minerals. We don't want too much. We don't want too little. We want just the right amount. And if in doubt, we always talk to our doctors.